Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today I'm making a happy birthday card, and this is a shaker card. I'm using a stamp set by Penny Black called Cake and Wishes. This is an adorable stamp set, and it's currently on sale at Cut at Home. So check out the blog post, I'll have a link in the description box, where I will have all the information listed on the products used and how you can find this stamp set on their website. I'm using some Tuxedo Black Memento ink and I'm adding my image to my acrylic block and underneath I'm using a stamp pad which will just give me a little bit better stamped image. It has a little give to it and I'm stamping this out on white cardstock. I don't plan on watercoloring this so I'm just using some regular white cardstock and stamping it out a few times just in case I wasn't happy with the stamp or my coloring. I have a couple images to work with. So I'm going to clean off my stamp with a baby wipe and now I'll just separate these so I can work with them and color them. I'm using my Tim Holtz Distress Markers which are my favorite to use right now and um, I'm deciding which colors to use so I'll grab a piece of scrap paper here in a second and just kind of sketch out some of the colors which then will help me decide what to use to color, color this image in with. So I will color this in and be back with you in just a moment. So now I'm using a standard size card base. I cut it to eight and a half by five and a half and I'm scoring it at four and a quarter. So this will give me a side folding card, an A2 size card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm using the label 17 dies by Spellbinders. And I love this new die um, or new to me die. It's a bracket die. And I'm going to cut a window on the front of my card. So I'm choosing the second from the largest, centering it on the front of my card as best I can, and then I'm using a little bit of scotch tape to hold it in place when I run it through my Sizzix Big Shot.
So now this gives me the window to the front of my card for my shaker card. And you just want to be careful when pulling the tape off that you pull it slowly so it doesn't rip your card stock. Now I'm going to fussy cut out the image. And you want to try to turn the paper as much as possible and not your scissors. This will give you a smoother image when you're cutting it out. Also on the dress of that little girl you might have seen, I used a Signo Uniball broad pen to add the little polka dots and the trim to the bottom of her dress. So now I'm using my Martha Stewart craft knife to cut out the little parts that I couldn't get with the scissors. And I'm running my black soot distress marker around the entire image, which will give me a more finished look. I did end up getting a little marker on her dress, so I just covered it back up with the barn door color again, and it, it hit it perfectly. This is some transparency paper just from my local office store, and I'm not measuring it out. I'm just cutting it and seeing what fits um, to cover that window on the front of my card. And here's a piece of scrap paper that I had in my stash. I thought this was a perfect color to go with that image. It's a chevron uh, yellow color, as you can see here. And again, I'm not measuring it. I'm just kind of cutting it and checking to see how much I needed to cut off. Now to adhere my transparency down, I want to use some strong tape. So I'm using some Angel Craft one quarter inch tape. And it does show through a little bit on the bracket side. So all I simply do is roll back the tape. Once I remove the backing, I'm able to roll back the tape. And then this way it hides it perfectly behind my cardstock. Here are three balloons that I cut from the Cameo. I'll have that design number listed on the blog as well. So I'm just kind of laying those out, deciding where I want them. And now I want to stamp a happy birthday sentiment from the same stamp set. So being that I'm stamping on the transparency, I'm going to use some stays on black ink. And to me, the stamped image looked a little crooked. So what I decided to do is take a little bit of rubbing alcohol with a paper towel or a Kleenex, I believe, and rub that off and it came right off and now this gives me the opportunity to re-stamp it. And this time I was happy with the results. Once that dries then you don't have to worry about that smearing. So now I'm setting my pattern paper in the back using a little bit of removable adhesive. That way it holds it in place so I can add my balloons and be able to see where they're at. I'm using some Scotch Quick Dry and some crochet twine, and those will be the strings to my balloons. Now you can make a shaker card as dimensional as you want with foam tape. This I'll be sending through the mail, so I wanted to keep it um, less dimensional. That's why I'm choosing not to use foam tape but rather just regular angel craft tape. So I'm cutting off the strings and I will add some glue at the bottom to hold the strings in place. I'm just setting that there so the glue doesn't get on my transparency paper while that gives it a minute to dry. So now I'm going to add my tape around the entire border of my paper. Adding a little bit of doodlebug thick glitter and some confetti that I had. I'm going to place that in and now remove the backing of my tape and place down my pattern paper to the front of my card. And then I'm really pressing that down to make sure none of that glitter seeps out. So now I'm just adding some glue to the back of my stamped image and adding that to the front of my card. 
I added a little bit of crochet twine for a little bow in her hair. I decided I wanted a piece for the inside of my card that matches. So I'm cutting out another die and I will be adding that into the center of my card for my greeting. And now looking at my card, I, I thought it needed a little bit more color. So I pulled out a piece of pattern paper that matches perfectly with that chevron. And I'm using the largest and the second largest die in, in that set and I'm taping them together and running that through my Sizzix. And now this will give me a perfect border for the frame on the front of my card. Had I thought of this, it would have been smarter to add this before adding the little girl, but it was no big deal. I just cut around it, which you'll see here in a minute. I'm using a pencil to just kind of mark where I want it cut. I'm cutting it around the present and her legs, and now I'm adding some wet glue. This way it gives me a chance to kind of move it around once I place it down. And I'm actually cutting it a little bit longer so those pieces will tuck under the presents on both the top and the bottom. I just peeled it back and tucked it under, which was very simple to do. And I was really happy with that little extra bit of color to the front of my card. So that's all there was to it. Please check out Cut at Home's blog. All the information will be listed along with the products that I've used. And thanks so much for watching.